Okay, so I made myself a spectroscope. It's pretty much your ordinary DIY spectroscope and the original intention was that perhaps I could make Raman spectroscope by doing a trick to block specific wavelength by physically blocking it, like placing some pin in front of a light path basically, but I don't think I can pull that out, but it's main, mainly why I'm showing this video is that fucking hell, I spent probably one day looking for software and of course I ended up writing my own and well it's not great but it is what it is so here's the basic image I am using Python and OpenCV to crop it basically flip crop and stuff I think this is also rescaled so the wavelengths corresponds to actual pixel I mean this is only because I have so low resolution I can do this probably but anyway and I am putting this into graph and so I can so I can view this data and this is basically sunlight well sunlight yeah here's scope here's sunlight the sky I meant so I wouldn't consider this to be calibrated the response curve basically I use some numbers that looked right <laughs> probably aren't but that's not the point. Let's look at the peaks, I guess. Okay, so I'm inside right now. And the sensitivity of this thing isn't that bad. I mean, these controls are absolutely terrible. I have to, I have to go here, put this up, then go here and trigger this thing. Otherwise, nothing will happen. And voila. And now the response time is so slow that I can, I can like barely do anything here. Anyway, so here is lead strip. It obviously fell from up there, so I have to get some profiles and put it into them and glue that thing and solder or even that thing and stuff but that's besides the point let's aim this this boy at the LEDs looks about right yep it's how about that Yep, so this is 450 peak. There should be peak at 532. And what's this? 600? Oh, I guess. Yeah, so here you can see LEDs versus my phone screen. The actual calibration was actually quite easy. I was just some lighter and some salty thing and well this is too high heat capacity I actually I actually use this thing so you can see sodium emission yep and this is sodium peak plus second order it looks like it's quite bright but my question, well, not always was, but what is this? Because I'm not sure. And okay, there's more. Okay. Looks like I wasn't aimed properly. So, Mr. Resolved, there's a lot of sodium coming out of there. And the other peaks I I'm not sure maybe stuff that's on there I mean maybe some copper because this is copper nozzle maybe something else 
doesn't matter, I think, that much. So, my point is that I have put here uh, quite a lot of citric acid very long time ago, so this is now all dark because it has dissolved quite a lot of iron. But that's besides the point. I have used the citric acid to check if I can eliminate the sodium contamination in the flame, and I can't. I mean, when you like have hot solution of sodium hydroxide, it it like it is caustic basically. So you can you can smell the sodium there, and I guess it's water I like that. And I did not really want to cover this thing in detail because you can see a bunch of videos on YouTube. But uh, I, have, I still have to do some experimentation and here I have some basically just some slit. This is made of uh, like sharpie knife and I put paper in there and I have tried 30 micrometer slit and it just looks more light, it doesn't get more precise. The body as you can see is made out of aluminium and wood. The thing with wood is that it is extremely transparent so even at like evening the image is completely destroyed by all the infrared that leaks through the wood. So you have to either wrap it or make the case out of aluminium, but at that point you can, you can probably buy spectroscope. Now I wrapped this thing today about two times and I'm quite unhappy that I have to unwrap it. So here is the slit. I have glued some mount there so I can have it on the stand. I, of course I countersunk these holes so it would sit flat and then I, then I did this. So. Okay, so here's the thing, basically. There's CD and there's camera. So there's a hole. This is like, well, it looks like this, and it's just secured with tape. And I had to create like mount for the camera, so because there's just two wooden pins and that's glued in into this block and that's glued in to the base. I can move this slit around, just take it off and put in a new one if I need to and or even align it. It's not aligned right now as you could see. And yeah, that's it really. Oh yes, infrared. I had to remove infrared filter from the camera, of course, because otherwise I wouldn't see it. And I think this, uh, this scope can see up to like 1200 nanometers, and that already overlap overlaps with second order for the blue wavelength, so it is what it is. So this is quite inexpensive toy basically and spectroscope would normally cost you and not sure if I will use it I guess because I wanted to have something to identify some products or at least to distinguish some products when I do some synthesis because well did synthesis work or not I a lot of times I can I can't tell but not sure if uh, this will be working for that purpose very well because I can do like I can do reflectance absorbance test but yeah maybe I can do some station for that and so I can put sample A sample B and see whether there whether there's some difference and I guess complement that with a TLC and a golden I guess Maybe, maybe not. Obviously if I would buy much filter so I can do ramen, then I would probably, I could probably buy some ramen spectroscope from some source. 
like it doesn't really matter to me if I spend two thousand dollars on some device or ten thousand at that point it's like it's investment yeah so that's all what I have for now bye